it's like 6 35 a.m we got a tip that they're going to be doing an acidizing maintenance job in the past these routine cleanouts have involved two to four taker trucks with 5,000 gallons each of chemicals corrosive and toxic chemicals to come into the Freeport um, Jefferson drill site. They should be arriving by 7 a.m. is what we're thinking. I mean, it's a pop-up protest, so you're just gonna have to <laughs> go with it when it pops up. I'm behind the wall because they have a camera set up like to show what's going on outside their gate, and so we don't want to tip them off that people are watching them. If it's, it's possible that they can cancel it and then just reschedule it for like say tomorrow and not even post about it until tomorrow, so. Yeah. Oh shoot. We had had a notification two days prior that Freeport McMoran was going to be conducting a maintenance acidizing job at the Jefferson drill site, I decided to go out to the site and kind of stake it out. When it got closer and closer to seven, I checked my email. I just had a feeling like all day yesterday, like I bet you they're gonna cancel once they get tipped or something. And then I saw it and I was like, no. So yeah, we're, I was there and there's no trucks. Yeah, it's disappointing you know, just kind of throws uncertainty back into the mixture. drilling site that was established in 1965. Um, the current owner is Freeport McMoran Oil and Gas and this site is um, one of the uh, sites that is closest in proximity to residents in all of Southern California. Yeah it's been operating in this neighborhood for decades and an environmental impact report has never been done on it. If you went by you wouldn't necessarily know that there's anything there. It's landscape walls on the outside. Um, but what's inside is over 30 wells. There's just a spider's web of wells that go out underneath the entire community. Like traditional means of extracting oil is sort of like you stick a straw into like a pool underground and it suck up the oil. What oil companies are doing now is they're using a process called acidization where they pump uh, tens of thousands of gallons of toxic acid into the ground to melt the rock, to dissolve the rock, and to free the hydrocarbons. 
the, the chemicals they use, like hydrofluoric acid, methanol, 2-butoxyethanol, they are known air toxins, according to California Prop 65, and need to be reported. It was always an odd thing. I'd be walking down Jefferson or driving down Jefferson, and then I started noticing occasionally there's this big, this big black crane you know, tower up. But I, I still, for years, didn't know what it, what it was. <laughs> you can like see the chemical storage tanks, the produced water tank, which basically is a mixture of oil and water. Oil spill had a lot of accidents. Like one day I came and it, my cars were had this misty, oily things on our car because we didn't know what happened, where this oil was coming. We thought it was raining oil. When, uh, when they drilling, the noise, the noise is big noise. It, it, it was a lot of commotion was going on in there. It kind of was like an earthquake. Boom. When they have a lot of activity like that, it's really hard to going on, the diesel fumes and oil fumes are so strong, I have to close all the windows. It, it smells kind of like a gas station, you know, is in my home. Uh, so my husband and I moved here this past July. So we've been here for almost a full year. I really wanted to use my public health degree to um, improve health and improve just the quality of life of marginalized populations. One thing I've been told is that it's really not normal for people to go door to door and knock on neighbors' doors. Um, yeah, lots of gates. But then at the same time, I also got to meet some neighbors who were super interested in what I had to share with them. <laughs> Eh, muchos padres nos decían en la escuela que eh, pues ellos les preocupaba por igual por sus hijos por los tóxicos que ellos usan. All these plants are dying here. Yeah, gee, if I am smelling all this stuff, and I assume that I am getting some kind of sickness because why these plants are dying? Uh, my, my children, I have one children, almost one month ago. She never had a problem, but I don't know. I don't, I don't say it, it for that, but she, she get asthma. Se siente como, como más o menos como cuando están fumando, como un pequeño ardor, como, como toses y como, pero nada más es como cuando están trabajando, mi niño. Eh, eh, él es el que me decía que mucho le ardía la garganta. My husband has cancer right now. How can I tell you that it's the same? My son used to bleed a lot on his nose, but we never associated with what was the problem. Never, never. We're meeting people who have lung cancer, for example, and, you know, it's, it's very troubling, the cluster of health impacts that we're seeing around the site. Some of the chemicals that they use are known um, endocrine disruptors, which means they would adversely impact uh, reproductive systems. So they are literally bringing in chemicals that will hurt generations to come, not just the current generation. I feel a little bit of fear, um, to be honest. Nathan and, and me would like to have kids um, in this area, in this neighborhood, and that's also a concern, right, bringing a, a child into the world. Like, it's, it's something I'm considering. Do I want to live here and have kids, or do I need to move? No me gustaría que en un futuro ellos se enfermaran por las consecuencias de el, los materiales que ellos usen. One of the conditions for this drilling site to be established in 1965 was that they had to retain the two properties north of it, which is this property and the one on the other side. So these two properties had to be retained and owned by whatever operator owned the drilling site as buffer properties. In 1999, the oil company went to the city of Los Angeles and asked for permission to sell those buffer properties 
to real estate developers so they could turn them into student housing. What's amazing is that the city planning department went along with that plan. In the documents, it said that the, the buildings could be renovated, but they would still be considered buffer properties, but with people in them now. So the oil company brought residents into closer proximity to their drill site. Um, at times we've seen up to four tanker trucks, each holding 5,000 gallons of toxic acid. And on one side of the wall, there's windows and residents. On the other side of the wall, just 10 feet apart, there'll be men in head-to-toe protective gear. The acid job was done in early October. All the ficuses on this side of the wall died, and some of the leftover from that original plant still clung onto this side of the wall, but all died. Um, they all turned brown all at the same time within a day. I had a, the LA County plant pathologist take a look at a picture of those plants and how and described how they all died in one day after this particular event. And he said, yeah, it really looks like they died from chemical exposure, probably not from over fertilizing, which is what the oil company stated that that was why they died. So I, I feel unsafe, right? Like walking down the street right next to them when they're in full gear, um, working with these chemicals. And I'm just as exposed to the chemicals, you know, very close by. Even the workers, if you, the workers have this approach to the community, it's like, Psst, we don't care. It has been a pattern how to conduct businesses in our communities, how they get away with so much. It's when they start breaking the sidewalks and the big trucks will park and use all the streets. Story after story, it's residents who had taken pictures of the oil company's workers illegally painting their curbs red. It was residents who gave us pictures of trucks parked on the sidewalks, turning those sidewalks to rubble. Is Freeport McMoran a good neighbor? No, not by any measure. They'll kind of stare at me and then talk on their walkie-talkies, but they've not actually told me to stop. Yeah, the, the derrick was up and I was filming. I was trying to get an audio clip too of how loud it was and a neighbor walked by and asked, Hey, you taking a selfie? Taking a selfie? Uh, no. actually no. Oh, I was... in, yeah. It's one thing to go around to houses and just hand out my pamphlet, give the information, and it's another thing to actually create a space where they can participate, a space where they can feel their voice is empowered and matters. In this organizing effort, some people are very concerned and, but don't know what they can do to be a part of making a change. A lot of residents already have a lot to worry about, and so I think there is a sense of, um, like, this is just how it is. In a way, we feel powerless, and so is it, we become so accustomed to say, well, why should we bother? I have a lot to do. I had to feed my family, pay rent, and we start ignoring and ignoring, and, and they, they're happy about it. They're so happy. It's just that's the way they want it. What they should bother? These people are not, never going to do anything. Yes, we are powerless against big companies. We do not have all those resources and the time. Uh, it's not that we don't care. Yes, we do. What's absolutely clear is that oil drilling is incompatible with a neighborhood. And so, as a city, we need to end this. Well, we're up against a very large adversary. Freeport McMoran Oil and Gas is a multi-billion dollar oil company, and they have tremendous resources. And I think for us, it doesn't matter that the oil company has a lot of resources. We get that. What matters is that, fundamentally, this is about the health and safety of our children and the kind of future that we want for them. 
And so we're going to labor relentlessly until we achieve our, our goal. There's like, unfortunately, a good amount of like built up distrust amongst neighbors. And so even though I'm going to all these individual homes and hearing people, you know, for the most part saying they don't like this drill site here, they're not talking to one another. And they don't know what their neighbors think. I'm hoping will change. I'd like, I would love to get everyone together in a room and feel like as people hear each other's like consensus with what they'd like their neighborhood to look like, people feel empowered and get excited about, you know, they have some ability to change things. So I was knocking on the door of the farthest right apartment there's someone there like doing dishes clearly he's, I think he's ignoring me <laughs> I'm not sure if I should try again because I need to get all four of these houses is okay before we can have our pop-up protests and do the press conference on their porch I'll try one more time hello hi I'm sorry to trouble you do you have a minute to uh talk about the oil drilling site. Um, every now and then they'll truck in thousands of gallons of toxic acid. What? So one of the things that we're hoping to do is uh, to do a pop-up protest. Pop-up okay, Yeah, cool. so the next time that Derek comes up again, we want to gather residents from this area, okay. um, community members to okay. and say, Look at this site. Look at how close it is to homes. Like this cannot be okay. Apartments in this particular home is to ask if the residents would be okay if um, during that pop-up protest we could hold the press conference right on this porch. Oh wow! Yeah. Jeez, well, this is a great movie you guys are doing. Thank you. Against neighborhood drilling. Okay, so everyone hum on that pitch. Hmm. Say against neighborhood drilling. And put it all together. Against neighborhood drilling. Rally Stand together. 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 Stand
Stand together. Against neighborhood drilling. 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 We're gonna stand together. Against neighborhood drilling. 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 We're gonna stand together. Against neighborhood drilling. Stand together. Against neighborhood drilling. We're gonna stand together. Against neighborhood drilling. Hey. Hi, thanks for coming. Come on up. You got a spot. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> um, I live here for about 30 years. We don't have the knowledge. And we see big trucks with uh, one of those uh, signs that say it's deadly. We never know what is going on in 30 years. Nobody in this company came to talk to us. If they just come to get the money and leave us, with all the nuisance, what is the benefit of my community, I wonder? I urge everyone who hears this message to stand with us in advocating for the well-being of our neighborhood. This will be a strong step forward in protecting the health and safety of our community. Hi, my name is Jennifer Blue. I am a mother of three kids, and we want to tell Freeport to keep their asset away from our kids. The only time they talked to me was when we had the spray. The house was sprayed, the ground was sprayed, the cars were sprayed. Dozens of protesters marched in South LA today. They're upset about oil drilling they say is bringing toxic chemicals near many of their homes. It's unacceptable that our homes would be sprayed with oil, that the cars on our street would be sprayed with oil, that the plants on this wall would be chemically burned as a result of the acidization that's happening on this site. Wong says neighbors at this site, which is operated by Freeport McMoran, are not notified before the big trucks roll in. They want more transparency from the company. We need to stop this. It's common sense. Stand together against neighborhood drilling. Yeah. So, thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you. He says it, it, it's really good that it's happening because, uh, of course, we can do it ourselves. My main goal for today that residents who have kind of gotten used to this site and maybe feel like they don't have a voice would get reinvigorated knowing that they do have a voice. So I think that did happen. We'll be ready the next time the trucks do come. Angelinos need to know. They need to know what neighborhood extraction looks like and we need to take action to stop this. It's not fair that this neighborhood has to bear um, a disproportionate burden of living near this oil drilling site. Something should be done um, to call justice for this neighborhood, for the families that live here, for the kids that live here. Everyone should have the right to a safe and healthy environment um, so they can have space to play and learn and have opportunities.